guys, welcome back to another part of the zombie apocalypse series. So today we are on episode 18. So in the last episode, I left it on a massive cliffhanger, which I love doing for you guys. You know how I feel about cliffhangers. They're very fun for me because I love knowing what's going to happen. And I love the fact that you guys don't. So, <laughs> so basically in the last episode, Miles, Kristen, Nico and Erin all went to town. But then in the middle of town, they got attacked after Erin dropped a cake thing on the floor like a numpty that she is. And basically zombies came in, attacked them all and Nico, Miles and Kristen managed to run away and get back to the cabin but as they got back they realised that Erin wasn't with them. They didn't know why but they just realised that she'd never come with them they don't know when she was with them the last time because they were so distracted. So this episode is going to be basically why Erin didn't go why she stayed back at the shop so we will see so when the zombies came in and they started attacking them over there Erin didn't know what to do, she just stayed behind this cupboard because she thought the best thing for her to do would be to get the batteries. She thought what could she possibly do differently that they can't do. So she thought it'd be best to just try and get the batteries. So she was racing through, trying to get into all of these cupboards, trying to look everywhere that she hasn't looked in because obviously the zombies are distracted. You know, they're already trying to attack them. So it doesn't really matter about the whole sound thing. So she was just racing through, trying to open everything and finding everything. And she just can't seem to find anything anywhere. As much as she's looking as all of this is happening, there is just nothing around her and she just can't find the batteries. Like we said as well, they don't actually know what the batteries look like, which is really stupid of them. But yeah, they don't even know what they look like. So then she's just kind of looking for what she thinks is just some batteries, basically. So as Nico, Kristen, and Miles managed to knock the zombies down onto the ground, they all started running away in this direction, going towards the door, as we saw in the last episode. And Erin didn't know what to do. She was still looking around to find the batteries, but she just couldn't find them anywhere. So at this moment, she just thought, okay, they're not here. They're not going to be here. I'm just going to go with them. I need to, we need to get out of here. There's zombies on the floor right now. You know, this is really dangerous. The zombies are right there. They could get up at any time. So she watched all of them run out of the door and she decided that she'd have to go with them you know that's like she needs to be with the group obviously and the zombies are gonna get up soon maybe so she decided to run over and climb onto this cupboard and get over to the door as quick as she possibly can but as she got up onto this cupboard she looked over just behind her one last time and there it was the batteries or at least some batteries she doesn't know if they were the batteries but she thinks that they could be the batteries so she was stood on top of the counter looking at the batteries and looking at them running out of the door and she was just looking back and forth thinking do I risk it and try and get the batteries or do I go out the door with the rest of them I don't know what to do right now this whole journey would be an entire waste if she didn't get the batteries because the whole reason they came here was for that and these batteries are literally right in front of her eyes right now they are sat there in front of her like they are just there that she could reach them so as she watches the others run out of the door and get away from the zombies as fast as possible without ever looking behind them because they are so worried that looking behind them could be the death of them she makes the decision that she's gonna get the batteries so as she stood on here she managed just to climb across here and grab the batteries trying to be as quiet as possible as the zombies are still over here and they're both starting to get up. So Erin quickly grabbed the batteries and then looked behind her and she could no longer see the others there. She didn't know if she should shout out to them and say, you know, I'm not coming with them but then doing that could attract even more zombies and they're already making enough noise as is. Shouting them like that would be a real mistake and it just wouldn't be worth it considering the fact that there is the two here and she doesn't want to put them at risk any more than she has to because she's already done that. You know, it was her fault that they all got in here so she felt guilty about that and she felt like she needed to get the batteries. But as she stood here, the two zombies start getting up and she doesn't know what to do. So she just goes down onto the floor and hides behind the cupboard as the zombies start getting up and start looking around to see if there's any food that they can get. Of course, none of them know what senses these zombies use. They know that the zombies came over when they heard the noise. So obviously they think that it could be noise related and that is what senses they use. So she decided to not only hide away from them so they could no longer see her, but she also covers her mouth so that her breathing would which is very fast at the moment. It can be quieter because right now she's breathing so fast and she is so stressed and her heart is beating so quickly. The zombies in here start looking around to see if there's anything that they can get. But after a while, they decide to leave and try and chase after them because they can hear the footsteps of Kristen, Miles and Nico going away. So they chase after them. And so does the zombie that was outside that Nico managed to get through the window. So with all of the zombies outside and chasing after the others, Erin was sat in here for as long as possible just covering her mouth and she was terrified she's just thinking to herself right now like the others have left she doesn't know if they if they know that she wasn't there with them she's thinking okay maybe they'll come back for me but at the same time she doesn't know that for definite and the sun is going to start setting soon and she's in this shop that she has no idea about she's in this town she's no idea about she hasn't got the map for the directions home or anything and she is just sat here on the floor absolutely terrified this is the first time she's been alone in ages whenever she has someone there like Adeline or someone that she feels like she needs to protect 
protect. She's a lot braver because she's doing it for someone else. But when it's just herself sat here, to only be protecting herself is very scary. And the fact that there is no one around her to get her out of a situation or to try and save her is a horrible feeling. So she is sat here just wishing that Adeline was sat next to her right now or that Nico was there or Chrissy or Miles or anyone was there next to her. And she's just thinking like, why didn't I just go with them? Why did I get these stupid batteries that I don't even know if they are the batteries they actually need? And she's just risked her life for this. So as she was waiting here, she was thinking of so many thoughts about just so many different scenarios that could happen from this and how she's possibly gonna get back to the others. So eventually she hears that there is no zombies anymore around here or at least in the nearby vicinity. She can hear them walk away and out through the door. So she's gonna go ahead and stand up and as much as she would love to just sit there right now and not move and just hope that someone's gonna come rescue her, she knows that that's really not a good idea because this is a, not, this is quite a vulnerable place. I mean, one of the windows are now broken from the zombie. This door is wide open and then we have these doors which obviously the zombies can get through. So overall, it's just not a great place to be in and it's not a very secure place in the slightest. I feel like she's doing a job right now. I feel like a zombie's about to come in as a customer and she's gonna be like, hmm, do you want some spices? Um, no, let's not do that. So as quietly as possible, Erin is gonna make her way over to the window. Okay, well, pfft. why do I always say like quietly and then they decide to just sprint? You just gotta ignore it. And she's just sneaking over here and she's just looking out of the window. Clearly it's not a great view because you got like this massive, <laughs> like what is it? Like a saddle thingy there. But she can kind of see and she can definitely see that the zombies are there. Not only that, but there are zombies surrounding her everywhere now. There are at least 10, 15, maybe 20 zombies in the area now. Probably because of all of the sound that they've been making. Kristen yelled out, run! And just so much different noises that has happened. Probably made it that the zombies think that there is food here and think that there, you know, there is humans here, which is true. She's looking through all of the windows to see if she can see the survivors anywhere. If Nico or, you know, Kristen or Miles have come back for her, but she can't see anyone around her anymore. They've all ran away because they ran very fast and she just can't see them anymore. So Erin's like, okay, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Okay, I have two options, right? Like, I can either stay here as long as possible and try and survive in this place. I mean, I guess there's food and, you know, it's a shelter and maybe wait till tomorrow or she could just go now and risk it and hope that she doesn't get attacked or hope that, you know, maybe the other survivors are near or maybe there's even other survivors that she could maybe find and be safe with. So even though she is like absolutely terrified, she knows deep down that she has to make this decision because if she doesn't decide one or the other, she's gonna regret it because she needs to do something. She either needs to find a place that she can hide in the shop or she needs to go out and make a plan and try and get back to the cabin. I mean, it, she's thinking, okay, it wasn't that far away, right? Like, I could make it back. You know, the others have just made it. So maybe if I just run after them, then I can make it as well. But with Nico, Miles and Kristen, the zombies were behind them. You know, they, they weren't near them and also there was three of them. This way, the zombies are surrounding Erin and not in like a behind, in like a front. Like, they are in front of her. So if she wanted to run right now, she would have to leg it through not only these three zombies that we have in this shop, but also any zombies that are around the whole town. And she can see a load just from this window. So all she wants to do right now is cry. She just wants to break down and sit in a corner and not even move. Because as I said, even though she's strong when she's got Adeline there, that's because she feels like she needs to protect her. But when she's by herself, she just doesn't have that kind of willpower for herself as she does with her friends or anyone that she loves. So she's just like, I really want to just sit down right now and cry and not move. But I know that if I do that, like, this will be it. And all of the time I've spent and all of the energy that we've put into surviving is going to be for nothing. And I don't want to be like one of those things out there. I don't want to be like that. And what if I, like, be Adeline or, you know, I, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that because I need to get back because Adeline is in her third trimester and I need to get back for the baby. And Adeline needs me, okay? So just even though Adeline's not here with me right now, she needs me, okay? So after standing here for quite quite some time and looking out and trying to imagine every single different thing that she could possibly do and where she'll go. She just decides, okay, you know what? I've got to go out there. I have to, I have to go out there. We've already lost so many people and I don't want to be another person added to that list. So she is going to go ahead and look over here. Obviously she's put the batteries into her backpack. So she's got those, but we've also still got some fruit that they never managed to grab because of the attack. So she's going to go ahead and grab some of this stuff that the others couldn't grab. I don't really know what exactly? I feel like stuff like pears, maybe grapes. I don't know what it's become a sign. <laughs> sure. That makes sense. Just kidding. We'll get some garlic, mushrooms. A lot of this stuff is unfortunately spoiled, but 
but we're gonna grab what we can and just hope that this will be enough if she manages to get back. You just ate the grape? <gasps> oh my god. She just scavenged the only grape that was here and then ate it immediately. And now we don't have it. That was so rude, Erin. Oh my god. What's also really concerning is you can see her energy right now is bad. It is bad. It is in the red and it's 7 p.m. now and it's not looking good because this is a terrifying place for her to be in. And I'm sure that all of this action and everything that's happened has made her even more tired. I think that that would drain you a lot if you had to go through this situation if you had to fend for yourself like this. So she's gonna go ahead. She's gonna make her way over to the door. She's gonna take a deep breath and she's just gonna think to herself, you can do this, Erin. Okay, you can do this. I wanna see my friends again. I wanna see Adeline's baby and I wanna see Nico and, and Miles and Chris. I just wanna see all of them again and I need to go and do this. I would say that this is probably the most terrified Erin's been this entire time. Even when the zombie apocalypse first broke out, you know, she was terrified, but she had people there with her and by people, I mean Adeline. A lot of you guys think that Adeline and Erin's friendship is very one-sided, but I actually think that Erin needs Adeline as much as Adeline needs Erin. Erin feels like a way better person whenever she's with Adeline and she can be brave and strong because Adeline makes her feel brave and strong. You know, she talks her up and she says that you can do this. So even though, yeah, Adeline does rely on Erin a lot, it works both ways. It's a friendship that works both ways like that. So Erin is trying to think about Adeline and think, I want to see her again, you know? So she is very slowly going to make way aside. I don't... <laughs> they run. I find it so stupid. She's very slowly gonna sneak her way outside, but what's quite scary is because of all the snow coming down, the snow is starting to crunch below her feet, so every time she steps, it's like, you know that crunch you get when snow's under your feet and it goes kind of like... <laughs> I hope you guys understand what I mean, but <laughs> I know what I mean. So it's starting to make that crunch underneath her, which isn't ideal. I mean, obviously it's doing the same thing for the zombies as well. So at the very least, like, you know, there's more sounds going on, but it is kind of a scary thing to have to hear because any one of those sounds could be it, you know, like that, that could be all the zombies need to chase after her. She's just going to go ahead and check in the cars again in case magically the keys are in there or, you know, there's some way that she could get out of here, but on Unfortunately, there is still no keys in any of the cars. She thought it'd be better to check again because if there was the keys in the car, then she could just drive on home. I mean, it would be a lot of a safer bet and it would be a lot less scary. But alas, obviously, the universe hates her. And by the universe, I mean me because I control this. And uh, there's no keys in the cars. How lovely. Just kidding. I think she's having a bit of a not great time right now. And her energy is getting to the point of when she's passing out in three hours. That's great. Not only that, but if you have a little look up right now you can see that the sun is on its way down she's just really not having a good time is she <laughs> so she's gonna keep walking in the direction that they all came from one of the only issues she's having right now is that because of the fact that her and nico were talking on the entire journey down she wasn't really thinking about oh we're going left and then we're going right and then we're going left because Kristen was the one directing them and she was just you know walking and just following after Kristen and miles and also nico was talking about their backstory so she was more so focused on that than anything else and how horrible it was so she wasn't really thinking about the directions so she remembers that they've got to kind of go in that direction because she remembers how creepy it was walking past that but aside from that she doesn't really have much of an idea of where to go she has the basic direction in mind but she doesn't know that well which is very concerning it's another thing that's definitely draining her because she's trying to imagine step by step she's like okay i was talking with nico we started talking there then we were walking down that road so then where did we go after that? You know, I don't know where we went. So that is another concerning factor to add into this because if it was, you know, if she had the map, it would be fine, but she doesn't. As she's walking, she's, she still has hope that the others are going to come back for her. They're going to realize at some point that Erin's not there, but then she's also thinking, okay, if it's the other way around and it was getting dark, would you really risk your life for me? Like, Adeline couldn't come and get me. I felt like Adeline's the only one that would really want to risk her life for me. And I don't know if anyone else would. I mean, I'm getting close to Nico, but would they really come all the way back down here just to save me? They don't even know where I am. I'm moving right now, which means that what if in an hour's time they go over there to the shop and I'm not there? Was this a mistake? Should I have stayed in the shop? And basically every single anxious thought right now is going through her head and how many different things could possibly go wrong right now, which is horrible. But I also think if it's very realistic, I would be too doing that. I would be thinking, oh my God, this could happen or this could happen. Oh my God, what if this happens? Oh no, what if that happens? You know what I mean? You'd just be so scared about every scenario. Ew! 
Oh, there's rats. Oh my God. I didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> Distracted. So as she carries on walking it's further towards the center of town past that creepy goddamn stables. I don't even know what is in there, but it is absolutely terrifying to me. And I'm not even one of the people, you know, like, I'm just playing the game. You know, I don't even need to <laughs> be scared. But oh my God, if I was airy right now, oh my God, I'd be walking past and I'd be like a crab because I'd be walking sideways. And I'd be looking in there like... <laughs> <laughs> so as she approaches the center of town, she quickly ducks and goes onto the floor and hides behind this fence when she notices that there are not only this zombie that was from there before, but also that zombie over there and that zombie over there. They've all came into this center part of town. So she's ducked behind the fence right now, holding her hands over the top, looking over and can't obviously keep looking in behind her because she's like, okay, I'm looking at these zombies, but I just need to make sure I look behind because when the zombie call it from me behind, oh my God. She tries to calm herself down a little bit. She's like, okay, 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 okay. think, think, Aaron, think. This is good news, okay? This is good news because if they're there, then that means that the others must have come that way, right? Because the, well, otherwise, why would all three of the zombies be there? Like, they were chased after Nico and Miles and Kristen, so they were chased after them. So, obviously, the zombies have got to be over this way because they were all coming that way. So, that means that they were going back to the cabin. They, they, they must have been. So, I, I need to go back to the cabin and we'll go over to the cabin and I'll make it back to the cabin, okay? So, you say cabin. Cabin! Cabin! Just even that little real odd anymore. Oh my god, okay. Honestly, she's getting to the point where she's starting to sound a bit like Adeline because she's getting so freaked out and so overworked and so panicked that <laughs> she's doing what Adeline does and really overthinks things and very much so talks very fast so she's getting very freaked out so she's noticing that the sun is definitely gonna set very soon like i don't even is it gone oh no it's there like oh beautiful 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 but she's like hidden behind this fence and she's looking over and she's thinking okay this path that i could go down it's kind of cleared a little bit there must have been other zombies going down there or whatever so i guess maybe it won't make as much of a sound if i if i go across the actual path bit because there's less snow on there or i could like trace the footsteps of the of the zombies and walk across it and hopefully it won't make much of a noise but also like you know what if what if i start walking and then i make a noise i mean clearly any noise in this in town is allowed because you know everywhere around here is very quiet and there's not much going on other than the other zombies so if i make a noise it would be like before but this time it would just be me there and i wouldn't have you know the others to be there and help ward them off i don't think i could <laughs> take on three zombies so she's just here for a while looking over the fence at the zombies and she's starting to kind of calm down a little bit. She's kind of just telling herself, okay, Erin, you can do this. You know, you've done this before. We've had to get past zombies before. The others managed to fight the three off and there was just three of them. So that was one zombie each. So, you know, this should be fine. Like, I should be able to do this. She knows that if, if there was someone here to protect right now, she'd be way better at this. But, you know, there's not. So she knows that it's a lot more difficult. But she's just trying to think, okay, she's like slowing everything breathing down. She's like trying to take in what Adeline's told her about yoga and meditation. And she's like, okay, breathe. <sighs> let's think this through rationally and let's do the smart thing. So the first thing she thinks is, okay, what would Kristen do in this situation? Kristen is smart and strong and brave kind of until she killed that zombie, but we don't talk about that. Um, and she know what to do. So she looks down at the ground and she sees an empty bottle just sat on the ground. So she looks at it and she thinks, Huh, okay, um, let's do that. This is a really smart thing to do, right? Like, Kristen would do this, probably. So, yeah, okay. So, she picks up the bottle and stands by this fence. And she watches the zombies in the town. And she just chucks the bottle as far as it can go over into this direction. And it lands just over here on the floor, just away from the center. As the bottle lands on the ground and smashes very loudly, all of the zombies start running towards this glass bottle on the floor. Erin sees them start leaving and she just very slow, very slowly Erin, very sl very slowly starts sneaking her way over to the center of town and past the zombies as fast as possible while still being careful because obviously, you know, if she makes any sounds then the zombies could still come after her. But as the zombies get over to the bottle, they realize that there's nothing there and it was just a, you know, sound. They can't see anything, they can't smell anything, they can't see that there is a human there. So as Erin is making her way over towards the cabin as fast as possible and back in the direction that they came from. The zombies start making their way back to the center after they realize that the bottle wasn't a person or anything they could eat. So Erin carries on walking in the direction that she was going as she's looking back and checking if the zombies are coming closer to her, which they are. But as she steps, because she's looking in the opposite direction and not checking what's below her, she steps forward and hears a snap below her feet. So completely frozen and not knowing what to do or whether or not the zombies heard that, she looks over to the zombies as they 
they start chasing towards her. She quickly turns around and look at everywhere that she could possibly hide. She doesn't want to go in there because there's a lot of open windows and there doesn't really seem like there's much other places to go to except the place next to her, which is the shop that they went to first in the last episode. She knows that there's a massive hole in the side of it, but she also knows that she has no other choice but to go in there and try her best to get somewhere safe because right now she feels like a sitting duck in the middle of this place as she watches the zombies run towards her. So as the zombies start approaching her and the sun starts to set, she runs as fast as possible over to the back door with the zombies right behind her. She is struggling so much to open this door. The latch isn't working and she can't figure out how to open it. She is grabbing onto the door and pulling it as much as possible and seems like nothing's happening. Her heart is racing so much and she is breathing so fast as she is panicking. The fact that she literally can't open the door right now just shows that she is absolutely in terror and she just doesn't know what to do. As she's trying to open the door, she looks behind her and sees that the zombies are getting really close to her. But at the very last second, just as the zombie is only a few feet away from her, she manages to open the door, get in and slam it behind her, holding it shut and putting something through it so that the zombies can't get to her. Erin slowly backs away from the door as the zombies stop bashing on it, trying to get in and trying to break the glass. But as she backs away from the door, she suddenly feels a hand on her shoulder. She quickly turns around to see a man stood much taller than her, looking down on her and smiling at her. She instinctively grabs her knife out in fear and holds it up to him. As she does that, the man says, hey, okay, no need for that, okay? You broke into my place, okay? Don't you think I should be the one holding up a knife right now? Erin looks so confused as she's looking at him because she does not know who this man is, this random stranger. He grabs on to the knife she's holding and slowly lowers it down for her with his hand. She puts the knife into her back pocket in case she needs it, in case of emergency and covers it with her shirt. The man just starts walking away from her and just says to her, come with me if you don't want to get bit. Okay. Erin looks over to the man, very confused, but also looks over to the zombies who are still trying to bash in the window. She just thinks to herself, okay, this is really bad. This is really bad. This is really bad. Okay, why should I come in here? Oh my god. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I can't trust this guy, right? But also, I can't go out there right now. I can't go out there. So she's just thinking to herself, like, this guy has really weird vibes. I, I did not like how he was talking to me, and I did not like anything about him. So I'm just gonna keep the knife in my back pocket. I'll just keep it there and I'll just go with him. I guess he's by himself. So maybe if, if he was weird, I could just attack him. So she is thinking like, you know, maybe I could go out of this door and run. But clearly she didn't do a great job of that before. And uh, I don't know if it'll be worth it because if she goes that direction, she's still gonna have to come around the building because she needs to go in this direction and go to the three zombies anyways. So she's very reluctant, but she also knows that she is kind of strong and she knows that, you know, she's not trusting this guy. So she decides, okay, I'm gonna pretend like I trust this guy. I can just, I can leave if if I need to, but I'm just gonna have to go up there. <sighs> this is a horrible situation. So they start making their way up the stairs and Erin follows behind him, holding onto her knife in case of any funny business, you know? I don't know why I just said funny business. That's so lame, but you know what I mean? We don't even know if he could be bitten. We don't know if he could be what? We don't know, you know? Like, this is not a great situation to be in, but she makes it up onto the roof and he just says, welcome to my humble abode. It's so uh, it's pretty great, right? Also, I imagine this guy having like a really deep Texan accent, but obviously, um, I can't do accents. We know this, okay? We know. That. I don't know. I'm twirling my wire, but you know what I mean. We don't. We know this, okay? So just pretend he has a very like. I don't know. I feel like he'd be like, "You're right. You're right. Texan. You're right. You're right. No, I'm doing Australian, aren't I? I'm doing Australian. Give me a minute. <laughs> Welcome. No. You know what? Maybe I just shot, but I feel like he'd be like, "Darling," and it would just be like. Get out of here. You know what I mean? Get out of here. So Erin just like looks at him and just looks around at the supplies that are around here. She could see like burgers and like a fire pit and that and some food left there and a tent and more supplies and all this stuff. And she's just like, this is kind of weird for one guy to be able to have all of this stuff. But she's just gonna say to him, you do know that zombies can climb, right? Like my friend literally got bitten because of the, but he's just gonna cut off and say yes. Darling, I know. Honestly, even just having to say darling, and it's just icky. It's just icky. But yeah, he's just gonna cut her off and just be like, yes, yes, darling. I know, I know. Why do you think I'm here just by myself, huh? And Aaron just like looks over awkwardly like, okay, so his survivor friends got bitten or what? This just, this just feels weird. This just feels weird. And he's just gonna look at her and be like, 
Okay, well, my name's Jax. My friends call me Jay, but call me Jax because you're not my friend yet, you know? Um, and your name is... Wait, wait, let me guess. It's like, mm, something beautiful. No, I can't. I'm not doing that. No, I can't. No. Erin just hesitates and looks at him and just says, uh, Jess. Now, realistically, do you really need to lie about your name in a zombie apocalypse? No, okay? Because what is he going to do? Google you, you know? <laughs> We're going to be in a zombie apocalypse. But I think still it's a smart thing to do is to just lie about her name because she does not want this guy to know anything about her. She is here so that she is safe from the zombies down below. And that is it. Okay, that is it. That is all the reason. And Jack just says, hmm, wouldn't have guessed that. Well, it's nice to meet you, Jess. So how come you're all by yourself then? And what are you doing out here? All by by yourself in this place? You don't really seem like you're from around here. And Aaron's like, okay, let's not tell this weird guy about the fact that I we came from the cabin. Because if I say that, he could make his way to the cabin. That's not a good idea. So instead, she's just like, well, first of all, she's regretting every life decision she made up until this point because she just wants to get out of here right now. But she also can't. Because if you haven't noticed, it's kind of dark now. And that is a really bad idea. Why on earth could she not have just had this lovely person? You know what I mean? Like, how can you be weird in a zombie apocalypse? Okay, I'm sorry, but you're in a zombie apocalypse. You've got to be a good guy at this point. You know what I mean? It's just... Anyways, she's just gonna think, okay, yeah, I can't tell you the actual story or anything about anything. So she's just like, oh yeah, my uh, my boyfriend, he's, uh, he's like six foot eight, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a lot taller than you. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> she won't actually say that, but she's gonna be like, yeah, my boyfriend, he uh, is gonna meet me here. So he's gonna be here tomorrow morning first thing and he's gonna want to see me and she's passing out, ignore that. And she's <laughs> he's gonna want to see me and uh, he knows exactly where I am right now, exactly where I am. So just waiting for my boyfriend. She hates the fact that she has to lie and say that she has a boyfriend for this situation because why should she have to do that? She's strong enough by herself. But she also knows that this guy is um, not a kind of favorite kind of person. So she's just like, yeah, um, my boyfriend. <laughs> because uh, obviously I've got to have a boyfriend because, you know, I'm a damsel in distress and obviously my boyfriend's got to come save me. Not like I could do that myself. You absolute despicable man. You despicable, despicable man. So yeah, she's not really enjoying this whole situation. Got hair on my lip. Uh... I got it. It's okay. Everyone crisis averted. Anyways, and it's just like, oh, okay. Makes sense. You don't have a boyfriend. And then they're just like sitting there mm, looking at each other and he's just like, wow, you're talkative, aren't you? Wow. Okay. Well, you could stay here for the night if you'd like. From what I've seen so far, you know, it doesn't really seem like you're great at this whole survival skills business. You know, other than that whole bottle thing, I feel that like you just, you're just not really meant for this, are you? So, you know, you probably want to stay here with me and be safe, right? I feel nauseated saying these things. <laughs> And Erin's just thinking to herself, okay, so this guy was watching the whole thing of me, like, running across from- where am I? Across here. Like, he was watching all of this happen with the whole bottle thing and all the zombies there. And he was just sat here, what, like, laughing to himself, just smiling, just watching it. Like, what? He's just making fun of the fact that I nearly died back then and he didn't do anything about it. So she is like, I hate this man already. <sighs> but I can't go anywhere else. So she's just gonna say to him, yeah, I'll, I'll stay, I'll stay. I feel like he's probably got like a cup or something that, or like, I don't know, she could probably pee somewhere. So she's gone ahead and peed and she is absolutely knackered. So he, of course, is a gentleman. Ugh. Ugh. And he is gonna go ahead and sleep out here for the night and say to her, you know, you can have the 10. You need your beauty sleep. You know when people write, like, really horrible characters? Like, this is out of the story, but you know when people write really horrible characters? How do they, like, you know when people act as, like, horrible men? Like, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? Because just saying these things is making me want to cry. So, yeah, just so I'll let you know. So, Erin is gonna go ahead and go to sleep. She's very wary of this guy, but she's gone ahead and put her knife right next to her on the pillow. Well, like, well, right there. So, if she needs it, she could just... Whoosh, you know what I mean? But she's kind of thinking, oh, oh yeah, it's the cheerleading sports day. How great. She's just, what? At what time is it? The cheerleading sports day? Oh my God. She's just like, I, you know, I gotta get some sleep. She's knackered and she's drained and this has been a horrible day. And as much as this is the worst place she would want to be in right now, it's actually the second worst place because the worst actual place would be out there and be risking her life even more. So... <sighs> Yay. So Aaron's got out of bed this morning. Well, out of bed. Out of the tent this morning. And he's managed to get them some... Well, okay. Let's be honest with ourselves. Yes, these are spoiled and probably quite mank. But at the same time, she has been living off of carrots for a while. So he's just going to give her the food and just say, Morning. I really wish you didn't snore so much. And she's just like, uh -huh. 
sorry she ate that food so incredibly fast she added down like seconds she didn't really trust that it was like okay you know she's thinking what if you poisoned it or that what but at the same time you know she was in there all night he could have just gone and killed her so uh, might as well eat the food i guess and he's just like damn you uh you ate that pretty fast didn't you quite hungry and as erin finishes a meal she's gonna say okay well <clears throat> i'm gonna go get going now thanks for the uh food uh thanks i guess okay i'm going and he's just gonna say huh thought your uh thought your boyfriend was picking you up from here thought that was the thought that was the plan i don't see why you have to leave poor Rome with the little stinky self honestly <laughs> and Aaron's like oh yeah no uh, it's not from this building no no uh it's a different one we're just meeting at a spot so i'm just gonna go there now and and go meet him meet my tall strong boyfriend now yeah he's just like well if you need to go anywhere you know i don't mind coming with you i i'll happily go you know you'll have some company uh it's it's it looks like a nice day and uh you know i could keep you safe you know? And Aaron's just like, for God's sakes, this guy is like a fly. Like, he's just, just leave, you know? But she's just like, no, no, it's fine. Seriously, it's fine. I can go by myself. I'm quite capable of going by myself. Thank you. But he's just like, oh, okay. You know, I just, I didn't want to be by myself, you know, after, after everything with my friends getting bitten. I just, you know, I thought it'd be nice for us both to have some company. You know, I'm not really doing this for you. I'm doing this for myself, you know? Because that was a really, um, a really sad, sad thing that happened with them. But it's fine if you just, you know, if you want to just go by yourself. And Aaron's like, I just need to go. I want to leave this man. He's weird and he's trying to be there and protect me. And she's just like, okay, if I say no again, I feel like he, he could hurt her. And she just doesn't want anything to happen. So she's just like, she hates having to put on this like thing, like this facade and this personality that like he just wants her to be like, and you know, not be how she normally acts because she'd never act like this normally. Obviously she's much stronger, but she knows that if she'd have acted all tough and strong that, you know, he wouldn't have let her stay there the last night. So she's just like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you're a, you can, uh, <clears throat> you can come with. I'm sure, uh, you know, you'd love to be my boyfriend. <laughs> so he's very happy about this. He's like, yeah, that's great. Can't wait. So they're just gonna go ahead and pack up their stuff and grab stuff that of his and grab as much as possible before leaving. So they are now both walking down towards the bottom floor and out. The zombies have seemed to have left. So they are walking around. Erin has got a knife there. Not only for the zombies now, but also for this random guy. How wonderful. That's so great. I'm so glad that they had to do that. Kidding, I'm not. So as they get over to here, Aaron's like, okay, well, he's gonna meet me here, so you can go now, and yeah, it's he'll be here soon, so, you know, you can go. And he's like, oh, it, you know, I really wish I could have stayed longer, you know? It's been really fun. It's been really fun. If you're, if you're absolutely 100% certain you don't need my help, you know, my survival skills, my muscles, then, you know, that's fine. We can, uh, I can go, you know, it's fine. And Aaron's just like, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go now. Seriously, go now. On the inside, but on the outside, she's like, mm hmm. <laughs> please leave. Um, so she watches as he starts to walk away and she waits until he's completely out of view until she starts walking up towards the cabin. She triple checks to make sure he's not there but he's not there and she's like thank god. I want to get home so badly. I want to see Adeline. I want to see I want to see everyone. And finally after walking for ages and honestly not really knowing where to go that well but she's just trying to remember. She definitely went in a few different directions but luckily after some time she gets up here and she sees the cabin in the distance and a huge smile goes onto her face she is oh, so happy to see the cabin and to see everyone and you know she didn't get hurt she didn't get killed she didn't get bitten she's fine and she's safe and she's okay so yeah, that is where I'm gonna leave this episode, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. A lot of you guys were scared I was gonna kill off Erin or make her get bitten, whatever. Do not worry, okay? I did not, obviously. Um, Erin managed to make it back. Unfortunately, she had to have a really horrible situation with that guy, but she managed to make it out of there and managed to survive. So the next episode will basically be everything that happened during Erin's night and so everything with Adeline and the rest of them back at the cabin. So it'll be like at the same time, but it'll be two different days because of how the sims work so hopefully that's okay but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below sorry if this video was a little bit weird basically i just wasn't really feeling it at all today but i have to record today because i only get two days a week i can record but this week i can only record today and so i was really not feeling it but i had to record it because i really wanted to get this video out for you guys so hopefully you guys don't mind too much i also really don't enjoy doing like full action episodes i much prefer it when i'm just like in the cabin and like you know doing stuff like that and like more talking and stuff like that so sorry if it was a little bit jumbled but i just i struggle with 
with action episodes just because of how the sims works it's very difficult to get across what i want to get across and like sometimes it's very aggravating to record because i can't do what i want to do and what i have in my head but i also don't want to you know get rid of my creative ideas just for the sake of it looking better so i kind of just talk you guys through it but hopefully you guys don't mind too much anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments down below let me know what you think is gonna happen in the next episode adeline will be giving birth for the next episode so let me know if you guys are excited for that i feel like this is a long time coming remember to like subscribe if you want and i'll see you guys in another video i love you guys Bye.